courage, wisdom, and power, plus a little bit of sass. Ever since their first appearance in the Wind Waker, my favorite Zelda race has been the Rito. Descendants of the Zora, but well, birds instead of fish. And their inclusion in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom just made them even better and more beautiful. So I want to paint up a model in honor of the best Rito, Cass. Okay, not the best Rito then, but one whose colors I think will fit really well on a model, and that's Rivali. And the model I think his colors will work really well on will be one of these griffin riders from the Human Empire from this month's One Page Rules. The abundance of feathers and armor means I can go dark with the feathers and light with everything else for a pretty vibrant scheme overall. And since the human's just a bunch of armor, I can keep that natural with just some metal, which won't disrupt the scheme at all. Also out this month are the War Wagon, the Marksman, and a very fancy general. Of course I have to start with the iconic desaturated blue, since that's what makes up the bulk of his feathers. For it, I got my black and white for the desaturation part, and an ultramarine blue because it's a more red shifted blue, which depending on what reference you're looking at, sometimes the feathers seem to have a hint of a purple tone. So that's why I also brought out my naphthal crimson, a cool red, so that I can add just a tiny bit to push it more into that hue, but still be overall more blue. To get it on the model, I could just paint it on, but this is a bigger model and I don't really feel like brushing on an entire underlayer, so airbrush it is for some speed. Just getting all the sculpted feathers, like around its head and tail, but also under the arms there's some feathers too. I did accidentally water it down a tad too much, so it will take a couple of passes. On the first layer, there didn't seem to be enough blue overall, so that's why I'm also getting his back in blue as well, so it's just more even along his length. Because griffins have the body of a cat, that makes picking out which color of Rivali's to use a bit more difficult, because he doesn't have the body of a cat. But this part here, either pants or some kind of feather, seems like a good blonde lion look, so I'm going to go for it with this mix, using white, black, and a touch of yellow oxide to give me the khaki hue. Like with the blue, I'll use my airbrush to get this on, but instead of messing it up with too much water, I actually get my ratios right, so it won't take too many coats to get an even base layer. Now I did skip a little of his lower body near the bird claws, because if we look at the reference, Rivali's talons are actually a much darker gray black, like really dark, so I'm going to want to match that. I'll do a mix of the black and yellow oxide again, though mostly it'll be the black and only a touch of white to make it a little lighter, but it should be really dark in the end, so keep it really dark at the start. I'll just use a brush to apply this since it's only for his talons, not much sense needing to clean the airbrush for a small location, and with all the black it should be easily opaque anyway, so it should only take a few coats to make it look even. And because this is just a sketch, I'm not worried about blending it into the other colors either. The last part I want to prepare for the body is the white tips of all the feathers. Now that I've got a dark base, I think it would be a pain to try and highlight up white from it. So I'm just going to get a gray mix with the blue, black, and white again. And with my airbrush, give me a head start on those feather tips for later. So this doesn't need to be a full opaque layer, just something to make it easier for later. When I was doing the layout, I went for my target colors, trying to match exactly what's in my reference. But that doesn't make for nice shadows, now does it? So I'm going to have to give this some shadows first. But I've got a little issue. Some of the colors butt up against other colors, so I can't do an overall wash. Or can I? Well, that's why I'm starting by making a wash of each of the colors I used, just a bit darker and more thinned out. So for most of them, it's just adding some black in the base color. Though for the claws, even this didn't look dark enough, so I added more black to the palette after and added that to the mix. But the reason I need all the colors ready to go is because I'm going to wet blend my washes. And it will start the same way as any wash, just grab my wash and start filling in the color. But when I get to one of those proverbial edges, that's when I quickly rinse my brush, grab the new color, and start washing with it. Near those contact points, the wash should be fluid enough that they start to mix on the model. 
but like a wash is supposed to do, also settle in the crevices and leave some of that base color. To keep things wet, I will work in small areas instead of something like filling in all the blue first, then the lion fur. It's better to have those mixing immediately before they start to dry, which is just more possible when you don't have to go around the whole model before getting back to the blending point. Once the shades dry, that's when I go over it again with the base colors, but with a twist. For the dark blue where his body is fur, I'm going to paint in fur strands, little strokes in a line with some gaps between them. This won't be the only time we see this. With the sculpted feathers though, that's when I just let the model's texture do the work for me and use the side of the bristles instead of the tip to catch all the raised texture of feather on the feathers. For the lion body, that's when I get back to the fur texture. Now I did quite a large contrast between the wash and the base this time, so these textures will be much more apparent as they dry. So I am going to make them a little more tightly packed, so it's covering the large round muscles and only fur rising at the shadows mostly. And when I get to the blue, that's when I add larger gaps between strands, but go right into that blue, which will blend better in the highlight step. For the talons, since they're going to end up pretty dark and are just skin, I'm going to just layer the base back on and leave the black in the tight shadows around the edges of the plates and muscles. The darker something is, the harder it is to see the texture. So no need to be fancy, just get some paint on. And for the white feathers, this is where I copy the blue and let the edge of the bristles do all the work again, leaving the shadows to the shadows and pulling the brush out towards the tips of the feathers, but keeping it flat so that it can't quite get inside the textures easily and leave them a nice shade darker. To highlight all the things, that's when I start adding white to all the things. Except this blue. I do add white to lighten it up, but I want to make sure I'm doing more than that by keeping some of the hue. So that means adding the blue and red as well. And I also thought it was too light with the amount of white I added, so I added more black as well. For this one around the feathers, I'm just going to focus on getting some texture on the edges around the feather. So missing the middle and stippling along the edges. It doesn't even have to follow each of the follicles of each feather, just some dots along the edge should look correct. For the fur, that's when I do the fur pattern, but focus in the middle of the muscles and also bring the blue into the lion fur a bit so that I can start to blend that transition some. It was still a little too dark in some really prominent areas, so I added a bit more white again and we'll do the same thing as last time, getting the feather edges and the muscle middles, but only in certain overall areas. That way he gets some highlight, but without going too bright overall. For the lion fur, this one just gets some pure white added just to lighten it up. So that's simple at least. And for the fur texture, like the blue, I'll start in the middle of the muscles and joints and spread out from there to give those points highlights. I do sometimes sneak into the blue, but in an erratic way. So that's more of a stray fur than a static pattern. This is where the blending comes in now. I'm going to take that light lion fur mix and add just a bit of blue to it for no reason, then add that to a bunch of medium in my airbrush. I'll use this transparent, thin coat just to soften the muscles of the overall lion fur, but also blur the difference between the blue and pale fur a bit more. For the dark talons, I'll add some white, but a very small amount. These are supposed to be dark after all, but I do want some depth to them. So with this slightly lighter mix, I'll just get the edges of these ridges and also a few of the rounded edges within the talon itself. And lastly, the white feathers. No special mix here, it's just pure titanium white. White has a property where it's opaque, but like not. So it'll dry much less bright than it goes on. So while this may seem like it's going to be a huge contrast jump, when it dries, it won't be. And I'm just doing as before with the blue, focusing on getting the texture on the edges. Now to move on to all the other colors. Luckily, some of this should be pretty one-to-one -one as well, like the leather straps. Rivali has leather straps, just like the Griff, so I'll just transfer that over. Starting by dulling down some burnt umber with some black and white. Rivali's belt seems quite desaturated, so by starting with something the right shade and saturated, and just losing the saturation, I think I can get a pretty easy leather blend. 
I'll start with the darkest of the mixes and just fill in all the leather straps that go around the griffin's body. Luckily in this case, there's about the same amount on Rivoli as there is on the griff, so it should match up really easily to the scheme without too much effort. For the next layer, just using my mid mix and starting in the middle of the highlight. I'll reach my brush outside of it and drag it back into it, and do that for both sides using the flat side of the bristles. Then once I have that area blocked in, I'll take the same color up along the edges to where it connects to the rest of the armor. And for the last highlight, this is where I can add a bit of texture, but since Rivali doesn't have much, I don't want to do too much either. Starting with just edge highlighting the edges towards where the light points in the middle were, then just add a few scratches inside that area, and maybe one or two small ones outside of it, but really not a lot of them. For the next armor color, there's the trim here that's actually quite similar in hue to the pale fur, but just a bit darker. And I think the best spot for that is going to be in the Griff's armor plates. And it starts with a very familiar mix, black, white, and yellow oxide. Just this time, much less white and much more yellow, so that it's still pale, but with more color to it. And the blue tint of the black should make it a little greenish, which is exactly what we want. I'm not going to worry about the edging on the armor with this, I just want the insides. So this is going to make it really easy to base coat since I don't have to worry about going outside any lines. There's already a giant barrier blocking my access to the other colors, and two coats of it should cover the gray nice and smoothly. Since I do have that barrier between the armor and the other colors, I'm going to cheat a bit with the highlight by using my airbrush to add it. Since I shouldn't get overspray onto the other colors, this will just be a quick way to get a line of a lighter shade separating the upper and lower plates. I did the highlight first because the one thing I really like about plates with trim like this is that they become really easy to shade by just making a wash from the dark color with medium and thinner and just adding a drop to each plate and let it spread to the edges. Start with a small drop though as it's going to be easier to add more than it is to try and remove too much. Luckily, I think this red is a good one-to-one -one translation as well. Middle of the body? Well, that's the saddle. The unfortunate part about it is that it's going to be covered mostly by the rider, so I'm not going to do too much with it. Just a red oxide and black mix for a base coat that only needs a few layers to cover. And then just red oxide again with some of the last mix put in so that it's a little darker than pure, since it was pretty dark in the reference still. And just a solid layering of this mix, and that'll be it for this one. I need something similar for this light blue scarf that Rivoli wears, and near the base of the saddle there's a little shawl that would make a good place for that. But being just a small part, I don't want to go too hard on it. Some familiar colors though to get my mix. White, ultramarine, crimson, and black. Just way more white this time to get it really bright. I'll do a dark and light mix for these. I'm going to loaded brush the base coat just to make it quick for myself. Get the light mix in the bristles and put the dark mix in the tip. Then just jab the dark stuff at the back and wiggle the brush till the light stuff comes out at the tips. The first pass is not going to look great, but it's the second layer that'll make it a quick affair to get the blue. It has a bit of white in it, like the feathers as well, so I'm going to grab some white and put a bit of the last mix into it and just line the edges with a stripe of this. It should give me the accent while still following along with the sculpt. For the last thing I'm going to show, it's going to be the only real mismatch here. For Bling, Rivali has some gold rings and armor in places, but on him, it's quite subtle. But on my Griffin, there's going to be much more of it because it's going to be the trim to his plate armor. So to make the mix, I want something opaque, so I'll use the opaque colors I can. Burnt umber, yellow oxide, red oxide, and black, and make a general brownish mix. I want something opaque, because when painting this time, I want to make sure it goes exactly where I place it, but also not need more than a few coats, especially along the connections. The reason for the brown is as a base for the gold, and I'm going to use true metal for this, starting with a dwarven gold from scale 75. The first step I'm going to do is just paint on a layer of this with an old brush, adding it to wherever there's going to be a highlight, like on his back plates, I don't cover the whole length, but just the top middle. That's because the next step is going to be some wet blending, taking the metallic into my brush and just adding some of the brown to the tip to start in those deep parts and pull the brown out with the gold. Once that's all done, which takes some effort, it's time for even more effort. 
the first step being to get all the edge highlights first with this amber alchemy, also from scale 75. I'll use a fine brush for this and start adding thin lines around all of the plates and sharp edges. It'll probably take a while because that's a lot of gold, but at least it's obvious where all those edges are on this one. On the back plates, it's going to be both the inside and the outside of the edges, but I won't always take the highlight all the way into the shadow, so it doesn't have to be a 360 degree line all the way around. Then the last step is to build some bridges. Once again, just getting some of the amber into my brush and thinning it out a bit. And when I take that to the model, I'll glaze the metal into the highlights. For the plates here, it's just down towards the edges. But for the plate armor, I only want to bridge the two outlines where I placed my highlights earlier in the middle of the bands. The last little bits were his claws, which I just did with the greys, his eyes, which I followed along with the artwork, and his beak, which I just used a blended mix for, Naples Yellow from Scale Artist. Unfortunately, I kind of ran out of time to get the rider done, but no big deal as the stars of the show with this unit are the Griffin. I really love how this transition turned out. While the colors can seem a bit weird and mismatched, because they're all quite muted, they fit together in a more realistic way. So from Rivali to Griffin, I'd say this was a success. If you liked this video, please subscribe for more like it. And if you'd like to support my channel, check out my Patreon, where I have new models and videos each month for you to print and paint.